For secure and efficient data transmission over the network channel, control mechanisms are needed to govern the transmission of data, which will be our topic for today's session. Hi guys and welcome to yet another interesting video by Simply Learn. In today's session, we will look into what is stop and wait protocol. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the agenda for today's session. For today's session, to begin with, we will look into introduction to the stop and wait protocol. Moving forward with steps involved in the protocol and continuing with the working of the stop and wait protocol and ending our session with knowing some drawbacks of applying stop and wait protocol. Now let's move on to the first heading that is introduction to the protocol. The stop and wait protocol is a type of flow control mechanism active in the OSI model of the data link layer. The transmission of data applies only to the noiseless channels where a noiseless channel represents an ideal network channel where no frames are lost, duplicated or hacked. Moving on, we have the stop and wait protocol is unidirectional in transmission of data that is either sending or receiving data will only takes place at an instance. For the third point we have the stop and wait protocol as the name suggests is when the sender shares a data packet to the receiver end. Then the sender side has to stop and wait for the receiver side to send an acknowledgement before it starts sending the next data packet. With this point we are now knowledgeable about the working of the stop and wait protocol at an elementary level. Now let's move on to the next heading. The next heading for the session is steps involved in the stop and wait protocol. The steps for this protocol are divided into two parts, sender and receiver protocol. Let's start with the sender side. The first step is to transmit one data unit at a time to the receiver end by the sender side. And the next step is to transmit the next data until only after we receive the acknowledgement from the receiver end. Now let's move on to the receiver side. In receiver side, step one is to receive the data and use the data that is being sent. Then the second step is after the data has been used by the receiver side, it will send the acknowledgement to the sender side for further data transmission. This is how the transmission of data takes place in the data protocol. Now let's move on to the next heading that is working of stop and wait protocol. Using the previous two headings, we can easily determine the steps involved in this working. Let's take a look. To begin with, we have two sides, the sender and the receiver side. The first step is to send the data from the sender side to the receiver end. And after the receiver side has used the data, it will send the acknowledgement signal. Meanwhile, the sender side has to wait for the acknowledgement signal. Only after it receives the acknowledgement signal will it send the next data packet. Now that the sender side has sent the data for the second time, the receiver side will use this data and then only share the acknowledgement signal. This process of sending data from the sender side to the receiver side and receiving acknowledgement from the receiver side to the sender side continues for n number of times according to the given scenario in the network channel. Now let's move on to the next heading that is also the last heading for this session that is drawbacks of using stop and wait protocol. The first drawback of using this protocol is the loss of data. This issue can arise when transmitting data from the sender side to the receiver end. It may be due to any issue, due to hacking attempt or network disruption 
or any other network related issue. Then this can also arise when receiving acknowledgement from the receiver side. Now let's move on to the second drawback. The next issue is related to acknowledgement transmission that is during the transmission of acknowledgement signal due to the network issues the acknowledgement signal is disrupted and the transmission is terminated. This can arise again due to any reasons that are occurring in the network channel. Now let's move on to the last drawback for this heading. The last issue occurs due to the delay in transmission time of the information. Time delay drawback can occur on either side of the transmission that is during data transmission or the acknowledgement transmission. With the completion of the drawbacks, we are completed with the session on stop and wait protocol. But stay tuned, this topic is not yet finished. We'll come up with the next video that is sliding window protocol, which is in continuation with stop and wait protocol. So stay tuned. With this, we have reached the end of the video. If you have any questions regarding the topic, you can ask them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.